Hi, my name is Eric and I'm the director of the Undergraduate Laboratory Program in Physics. I wanted to welcome you to Spring Term 2020 where we're going to be doing our lab program remotely. We're actually relatively fortunate because lab programs like chemistry and biology have some really great set piece experiments, but they need to be conducted on campus. We have a relatively good fortune in physics that a lot of our first year program can be conducted at home. We're still going to rely on a bit of simulation here and there, but for the most part, almost everything we do in our first year lab program can be replicated at home. We still can achieve the main purposes of our lab, so the show must go on. Now, unlike regular labs, you're not going to have a lab partner. You're going to be doing all the work in the labs yourself. That's collecting your data, analyzing it, and producing any write-ups we ask of you. You're going to need some simple materials for a lab, most notably a smartphone. A smartphone is going to have a camera and a really robust sensor suite, and we're going to use the data from that sensor suite to do some simple physics experiments. We're going to make use of your smartphone camera by filming things playing out, balls dropping, bouncing off of the floor, things falling with air resistance. All of those things will use a video analysis program called Logger Pro. Logger Pro allows us to take that video information and move it into physics quantities and we can study the properties of its motion and do some physics experiments that way. We'll also be making use of an app called Firefox. Firefox takes the sensor suite in your phone and measures information from it and provides it to you in the quantitative data that we need uh, to do the physics experiments. Now, one piece of information. If you're running the latest version of Mac OS, which is 10.15, also known as Catalina, you won't be able to use the Logger Pro program. It doesn't work with the new operating system. For you, you're going to have to log into the University of Alberta servers and use the computers there remotely. We'll also provide all the lab manuals online for no additional cost, and we'll be making videos a lot like this one to go over the content in the labs. Nearly every lab is going to be due at 5 p.m., but on different days through the semesters. Could be Wednesdays, could be Fridays. We'll just go through and have different lab dates. Your full lab schedule will be available to you through eClass. All of our communications are going to be electronic, so we're going to have to go ahead and uh, use eClass, email, and Google Meet to communicate. We'll also go back and forth on the online forums. What we ask for you is that you turn around uh, to email and respond within one business day. We're going to try to do the same, so this allows us to plan through logistical issues. I'd like to introduce the lab staff. You already heard from me. My name's Eric. I'm the director of the Undergraduate Laboratory Program in Physics, and I'm working closely with Kyle Foster, who's the Undergraduate Laboratory Program Coordinator. If you ever need to reach us, just email physugl at ualberta.ca, and that's going to go to both of us, and we'll be able to respond to your email in a timely fashion. If you email our individual accounts, our response times are going to be a little bit lower. You can also post any questions you have about the content in a lab onto an anonymous forum that we're setting up and using a third-party service called Piazza. If you have a question, it's almost certain somebody else does too. So we want you to post the question, and you can do so anonymously and get information from your instructors and from your peers. If you send us a question, we're just going to post it to the forum for you. So go ahead, save a step, and just post the question there. Each lab will also have some TAs associated with it. TAs are mostly there to answer questions on the forum, but also to mark the assignments and give you some feedback. You won't have to interact directly with them, except if you attend one of our online help sessions. They'll be available then through Google Meet to answer some questions directly. None of those sessions are mandatory. They're just there as kind of an office hours if you have questions about a lab. Going back to the Piazza forum, Piazza is a third-party service, and what it does is it allows us to post, lab, uh, post questions about the lab anonymously, and also to collect any information about the labs together under a single thread. So if somebody has a question about how to use Logger Pro, and other people have the same question, we can group them all together in a way that's easy to find. Both the instructors and the students are able to provide rapid feedback through the Piazza system. 
The last thing I want to talk about is academic integrity. As noted, you're working by yourself in this uh, setting, so you are expected to work through the experiments yourself and submit your own lab reports. But that doesn't mean you have to do it all yourself. You can work with TAs, uh, ask questions of the UGL staff, post questions in forums, and even interact directly with your peers. But when you do so, we expect that you give credit where credit is due. And so what that means is that you need to include any references or acknowledgments to, your work, to other people's contributions inside your lab report. Read the lab manual for more details on that. If you are repeating a class and going through our lab program again, you do need to complete the labs a second time. This means new labs and new experimental data and new write-ups in each kind. You just can't submit the same work that you submitted the last time you took a class. That represents a form of what's called self-plagiarism. Uh, we want to note that we do scan all the lab reports that we get uh, that come in and we compare them to all the other lab reports this term and in previous terms uh, to search for instances of plagiarism. We do have a lot of cases in physics labs and we're asking you to be aware of this so that you are submitting your own work. Uh, please also be aware if you share your lab report with somebody else and they use part of that lab in their own submission, you are still responsible for that material and can be uh, found guilty of what's called participation in an offense. So we've had over a hundred cases of plagiarism in the past year and we'd really like to drop that number down to zero. So please contribute only work that you've done to yourself and represent only your work as your own as you make some submissions. To see if you understand all this and are just clear on expectations, we do ask that you complete an academic integrity quiz before you get access to the lab material, just so you're aware of what our standards are and you can understand how all the code of student behavior rules play out into the physics lab program. Well, that's the bad news. It's out of the way. I hope we don't ever have to deal with it again. And now I just wanted to say thanks for watching and we look forward to seeing you in online labs. Go ahead, look at the beginning material from the lab manual that's available on eClass, complete that academic integrity quiz, and that'll unlock access to your first lab. Thanks again.